In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins, for the grace to make this time a prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Lord Jesus, very much in your presence, we want to pray today about something very dear to you, which is love for your mother, love for your mother and ours, the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the Gospel of St. John, we see that our Lord let his mother kick off his public life, kick off especially his miracles. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. How consoling that line is. The mother of Jesus was there. How special any place is when Our Lady is present. And this is a line that applies to our life. Mary is the queen of the universe. Mary is the mother of the church. Mary is wherever her, wherever her son is. And we're all members of his body. And therefore, she's she's our mother too. The mother of Jesus was there. She's close to us. She's in our life. We can address her directly, talk to her, put things in her hands. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Jesus goes on to perform this first miracle of his, this first sign, this first indication of his divine power, of his divinity. He changes water into wine. And he does so, as we just read, at the request of Our Lady. And this is a fascinating passage because when Our Lady requests or indicates to Jesus that he should do something. They have no wine. Jesus' first response seems like a, a, a really negative one. It seems like he's telling her no. And he's telling her no in a very strong way. Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. Jesus appeals to divine providence, the divine plan, in his negative response to Our Lady. It's not time yet for miracles. It's not time yet for this revelation. And yet Our Lady senses that he can't deny her, senses that a concern of hers will be very much a concern of his. Whether or not he's going to perform a miracle, she knows he'll do something. He'll do something to help. And so she takes that no and somehow sees it as a yes. She hears him say no, and yet in her heart she knows that he cares and that he loves her and that he has to respond to her request. And so from a no, she acts as if he had said yes, do whatever he tells you. How do you turn a no from God into a yes? Why did Our Lady interpret this negative response as something positive? Well, with trust with trust in his love, with trust in his power, with trust in his care for her and for for everyone. She knew how much he, he loved everyone. And the experience of the church is the same, that whenever we go to Our Lady, because she's our mother, and because she has such pull with God, the mother of God, she always comes through in one way or another. She'll always help us in one way or another. This confidence in Our Lady's intercession and the experience of the Church is encapsulated, summarized by the Memorare of St. Bernard. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. 
Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto thee, O virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O mother of the word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. It's an interesting prayer. We are basically daring Our Lady not to help us when we pray the Memorare. Remember, never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Right? You've never, you've never not responded before. So I dare you not to help me now. I know you're going to help me now. And May is a wonderful opportunity to do this, to live this confidence in her power before Jesus, in her power before God, and in her love for us, in her care for us. To pick out some big problem, pick out one or two big intentions that we have. And to find some way of going every day for the rest of this month to Our Lady, putting in her hands some specific prayer, something extra, something extra that we add to our spiritual plan of life. To show Our Lady that we have confidence in her, to exercise belief, the belief of the Church in her great power before God. There's a Latin saying in the Church's tradition of prayer, which expresses how much confidence and how much love we have for Our Lady. De Maria Numquam Satis. Concerning Mary, it's never enough. There's never enough. De Maria Numquam Satis. This is St. Louis de Montfort writing about devotion to Mary. And yet in truth we must still say with the saints, De Maria Numquam Satis. We have still not praised, exalted, honored, loved, and served Mary adequately. She is worthy of even more praise, respect, love, and service. Concerning devotion to Our Lady, love for Our Lady, we can never have enough. We can never do too much. And maybe our reaction to that, and it's a natural reaction, is, well, that's a bit much, right? It's a bit of an exaggeration. How can we not go overboard in anything? except for love of God, who's infinite and who deserves our adoration. But this, this sentiment makes sense if we realize that Our Lady is essentially a door. She's essentially a door to her son, a portal to her son, and therefore a portal to God, because Jesus is God. And so if we keep going to her, no matter how much we go to her, she's always going to bring us to him and bring him to us. And we can never get enough of that. And this is the deep sense of those wonderful titles of Our Lady in the Litany of Loretto. That litany which many Catholics pray after the Rosary. Spiritual vessel, vessel of honor, singular vessel of devotion. A vessel, of course, is a container. It's something used to transport some important objects or some material. It's used to carry something else to serve something else. And this is Our Lady. She's, she's a vessel of God, carrying God to us and carrying us to God. House of gold, ark of the covenant, gate of heaven, morning star. The house of gold, Our Lady, is the first tabernacle, the first physical container of God, of Jesus. Ark of the covenant, Our Lord, is the new covenant. Our new relationship with God happens forever, an eternal covenant, in Jesus Christ, in the person of Christ. Gate of heaven, morning star, the morning star rises before the sun, it, it announces the coming of the sun. All of these images, Mary is the vessel, the conduit to God, a container of God. It means that we can't go to her too much. She always loops us back to her son, loops us back to God. De Maria Numquam Satis. And also we can't get enough of devotion to Our Lady in the, in the sense that we can, we can never imitate her too much. She's the perfect model of what it means to be a Christian. Perfect model of the Church. And specifically, we, we can never imitate enough her response to God. Ecce Ancela Domini, Fia Mi Scunu Verbum Tuum. We could always make that attitude ours those essential attitudes of humility, 
obedience, love of God. And we realize, Lord, that when we look at those attitudes and that response of your Blessed Mother, that they're your attitudes too. This is exactly what shapes and forms your personality. Learn from me for I'm meek and humble of heart, our Lord says. Learn from me for I'm meek and humble of heart. Humility of heart is a trait we see so clearly in, in our Lord and also in his mother. Our Lady calls herself the handmaid of the Lord in Chile Domini. The original Greek word simply means a female slave. Dule is the Greek word. He's looked upon the lowliness of his handmaid, of his dule, of his slave. And that's shocking to us, and it's supposed to be shocking. Who wants to be a slave? Right? Slavery to another human being, of course, is extremely degrading. It's not in accord with our dignity. But God is so good and so powerful and so wonderful and so transcendent that to be a slave of God, to give over our freedom, to do whatever God wants, freely, of course, but to do whatever he wants, to give over our life, to say we're his, we belong to him. He's our master and Lord, to be a handmaid of the Lord, a servant of God. Far from being something that, that demeans or degrades us, exalts us, gives us a greater dignity, fulfills our deepest desires of happiness and love. We see this in Our Lady. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word. And because of that, because God looks upon the lowliness of his handmaid, behold, all generations will call me blessed. It's a fulfillment of our Lord's words. He who humbles himself will be exalted, and he who exalts himself will be humbled. Our Lady, our Mother, help us to learn this wonderful lesson of your humility. Help us to follow the example of your desire to serve God, your desire to give over your will and your whole life to God. Be it done unto me according to thy word. We can't pray to her enough. We can't trust her intercession enough. Never was it known. We can't imitate her enough. And so this may, right now, in this time of prayer, we ask you, Lord, what should I entrust to your mother? What problem do I need to put into her hands? Where, Lord, do you want me to challenge her with this dare? I dare you not to help me, my mother. I dare you not to take care of me. Pope Francis has popularized the devotion to Our Lady Undoer of Knots. That Our Lady undoes the knots of our life when we go to her with confidence, when we go to her with consistency. This is the prayer of Our Lady Undoer of Knots, and we can pray it slowly in our mental prayer. Virgin Mary, Mother of Fair Love, Mother who never refuses to come to the aid of a child in need, Mother whose hands never cease to serve your beloved children because they are moved by the divine love and immense mercy that exists in your heart. Cast your compassionate eyes upon me and see the snarl of knots that exists in my life. You know very well how desperate I am, my pain, and how I am bound by these knots. Mary, Mother to whom God entrusted the undoing of the knots and the lives of his children, I entrust into your hands the ribbon of my life. No one, not even the evil one himself, can take it away from your precious care. In your hands there is no knot that cannot be undone. Powerful Mother, by your grace and intercessory power, with your Son and my Liberator Jesus, take into your hands today this knot. And there, if we know what our big knot is, we give it over to Our Lady. We put it into our hands right now and every day of May. We put that knot into her hands. We let her take care of it. I beg you to undo it for the glory of God once and for all. You are my hope. Oh, my Lady, you are the only consolation God gives me, the fortification of my feeble strength, the enrichment of my destitution and with Christ the freedom from my chains. 
Hear my plea. Keep me, guide me, protect me, O safe refuge. And we all have experience. We all have experience of Our Lady's help. We all have experience of her helping us in some situation, big or small. I remember before I was a priest, I was working on a PhD in philosophy. And my dissertation was a, was a real bear. I made a couple of mistakes. I, the biggest mistake was my topic. It was, a, it was a thorny one. It was a difficult topic. And there had been way too much written on it. So I had to, I had to wade through all the secondary literature and then try to come up with something new. And I remember I was, I was working on the dissertation really struggling and, and wondering if I would ever finish it, if I was capable of it. And a friend came to me, it was the month of May, and he said, John, let's go, let's go do a pilgrimage to Our Lady, and we can entrust to her the completion of your dissertation. And I was like, that's a great idea, right? Nothing else is working, so <laughs> why not? And so we went, we went to the shrine. Was, I was living in New York at that time, and there was a shrine up north of New York City. I'm pretty sure it was right on the Hudson River. And I'll never forget, we got there, and the image of Our Lady was gigantic. It was like 70, 80 feet tall, something like that. And she's high up and overlooking the the surrounding landscape. And it wasn't a particularly pretty image or moving in the sense of its beauty. But it was striking in, in... It's power. Our Lady looked like she can get a lot done. Standing there in an imposing way, dominating the landscape, her arms stretched out. And I thought, yeah, this is the kind of image that I need right now. (laughs) I need a, a virgin mother who's imposing, who has power, who can get things done, who's big and strong. And so we did the pilgrimage, and I and I entrusted to Our Lady the knot of my thesis, and it worked. It worked. I I finished the thing. It wasn't it wasn't miraculous intercession, but it certainly was an intercession. Eventually, I finished the writing the dissertation. I defended it successfully, and Our Lady helped me, and I and I and I felt her help in that process, that difficulty in my life. So let's trust it with big things, with big problems, with things we find insoluble, right? A knot is something that we find insoluble. How am I going to untie this? And that's why we give it to her. You're better at this than I am. Sometimes we ask for things that are, it's fine to do this, but sometimes we only ask for things that are mundane and small. Hail Mary, full of grace, help me find a parking space, right? That kind of thing. And we have this powerful ally who's all-powerful in her intercession before God and who's our mother. And so let's ask her for big things, for, for the solution of big problems. And again, she might not give us a miraculous solution. She might not you know, take away that problem instantaneously the way that we want, but she will help us. And we might not see the help right away, But if we go to her consistently with some problem, especially in this month of May, dedicated to her, she will help you. In a few months, in a year, who knows, but you will see her help. Never was it known, never was it known that she hasn't helped her children. So have confidence, go to her, put that thing in her hands, the thing that you find most intractable in your life, most difficult to deal with. Take that and put it in her hands and she will help you. It might be that that she helps you carry some cross. She doesn't take away the cross. But she'll help you she'll help you carry it. She'll help you get through it, to see it as a purification, to turn it into a means of love and of trust. I remember my mother growing up, if we had scraped our knee or had some minor minor injury naturally we'd go to our mother for help so i'd go to her with the scraped knee and you know oh my knee is scraped help Uh 
And uh, and she would say, okay, let me see your pinky. My pinky? Yeah, give me your pinky. So I'd hold out my, my hand, my pinky. And she would take her, her hand, her fingers, squeeze really hard, really hard down on the nail of my pinky. And eventually say, ow. And she would say, well, how's your knee feel? And I'd say, fine. And then she'd say, okay, go. Go play. You're, you're cured. <laughs> and so I think sometimes Our Lady deals with us like that. And so does God. And he helps us to, to deal with problems by making us stronger, by, by making us tougher, by expanding our capacity to suffer and to get through things. Not by babying us and taking things away, but by, with his grace, entrusting us with, with the cross, a greater capacity to deal with problems in the way that he wants. So when we go to Our Lady, that might be the way that she helps us. She might help us to, to live through that knot. And then it's not a knot anymore, right? It becomes, it becomes very much a means for holiness, a means of our identification with her son, something we embrace and, and live through willingly. De Maria Numquam Satis. We can never love her enough. We can never imitate her enough. We can never go to her enough with our problems. She always listens. She always responds. She always brings us to God. In the late 60s and the early 1970s, the church, of course, was going through a very difficult time in those post-conciliar years after Vatican II. There was a lot of confusion. There was division. There was lack of faith. And St. Josemaria, the founder of Opus Dei, was deeply affected by this. He had such a great love for the church that the confusion and the division he saw in the church corruption affected him personally in a very deep way and people saw him during mass he, there would be tears streaming down his face during mass in those years and St. Josemaria's reaction was not to um, give into activism to launch campaigns to reform the church although he did <laughs> He did talk to people and go on um, visits to, to countries where he'd give these catechetical talks. I mean, he was active and he, and, he, and he did try to help in the way that he could. But his main reaction was supernatural. His main reaction was to turn to prayer. And in that prayer, his instinct was to turn to Our Lady, Mary, Mother of the Church, and he started making pilgrimages. He would visit different countries to see members of Opus Dei, but also to make a pilgrimage to, to a shrine of Our Lady in that area. He went to Lourdes, he went to Fatima, he went to Our Lady of Teresidad. He went to many churches in Rome on pilgrimages to beg Our Lady to help the church, to help Opus Dei. And then in 1970, he made a pilgrimage to Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico. And he did a novena there, going there every day for nine straight days, praying the rosary and then just talking to Our Lady out loud, speaking to her. And on the last day of that novena, he spoke some words that I think can help us in our own prayer. I don't have words to express my great, great joy at being here with you, Mary. This is St. Josemaria speaking directly to Our Lady in his prayer out loud, in the presence of other people. My children, I call you to witness before God that I want to tell her who is our mother, whose children we are proud to be, that I have come here because more than ever during these months, I want to pray to her not to abandon the church and not to abandon us. I know that she can't ever leave us, but I am begging her to cut short the time of trial, the storm that is beating on the ship of Peter. 
and I am appealing very especially, constantly, to her intercession, because I trust her with all the strength of my soul. Trust in Our Lady. Trust in Our Lady's love for us and her power before God leads us to to go to her, to ask her to intercede, to ask her to do something. Through Our Lady's hands, through her, who is all-powerful in her supplication. I also need to say to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, that I place myself before the Blessed Trinity in total submission, in unreserved self-surrender, and I repeat in a sincere prayer the acceptance of God's will that she showed with her fiat, be it done. And so I'll go away giving thanks. Our Lady, I surrender myself. I surrender myself totally. I'm not asking for anything anymore. I love your son's will. We abandon ourselves. We rest. We love and accept your design. Obeying God's will in full. We know, Mother of ours, that you will give us the means to take forward this path of charity and love and to spread it throughout the world. I've always loved this colloquy that San Jose Maria had with Our Lady on that last day of the Novena because it fluctuates between two points which our devotion to God and our devotion to Mary should also fluctuate depending on the needs of our soul and dead what we're experiencing at the time. On the one hand, asking her, begging her to help the church, to help with this big problem, this big knot that he saw in the world and the church. And on the other hand, total trust, trust to the point where he says, I'm not asking anymore. I abandon myself. I submit myself. I accept your will. I trust you so much that I know that you'll take care of it. I've already asked enough. And I think we too should fluctuate between periods of of begging, of asking, pleading with Our Lady to help us, and periods in which we're, we're moved to say, okay, you've got this. I've put it in your hands. I can relax. I can rest. I can do some other things. We go to Our Lady, Mary, undoer of knots, Mary... Mother of the Church, uh, pray for us. Help us to love you more and more. Help us to see what not you want us to bring to you. Our Lady wants us to bring to her our problems so that we can experience her love and experience the power of God who works through her intercession and therefore come to trust and love God more. Our Lady, our Mother, what should I bring to you What do you want to help me with? I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations which you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.